I made a visit recently to Astley Green in May 2017 to check out the remains of the old colliery railway and meet up with a fellow enthusiast, Steve Leyland. It brought back memories of my first discovery of the place when I walked down the canal towpath all those years ago. It's amazing how the place has changed. And there amongst the bushes I spotted the brick remains of that railway bridge that spanned the canal and caused so many spectacular displays of effort from the steam engines. Saturday afternoon in September 1968, just after the steam had finished on British Railways, that I happened to be visiting some old neighbours who had moved to Astley Green from Cheatham Hill where I lived. And they lived over in the village of Astley Green, they'd moved to this new house in Astley Green. And I came along the canal here, unknown that there was a colliery like this with all the steam engines. Yeah. And I saw a steam engine pass over this bridge here and I couldn't believe my luck. Harry was coming back over Chat Moss and heading for the canal bridge after picking up empties from the mainline sidings two miles away. And I, I just came up the bank and there were two other steam locomotives in steam running around the colliery yard there. Mm -hmm. And that was my, ro my romance mm -hmm. with Asti Green started at that point. I see. British Railways had just finished in August 68 and it dovetailed into it just perfectly. Coming here, you just got a different type of engine on the same sort of trains really. And all the uh, excitement of all these steep gradients and the, the working hard and the smoke and everything else, it was, a, it was perfect. Just great, yeah. So it was, the, it was the steam action on our doorstep that attracted me in the first place. It was unusual for an industrial railway, wasn't it? Yeah, for on, on by NCB standards, it was quite a long line. That's right. And this was the attraction for enthusiasts that you got you got a line with all sorts of different locations and nearly all uphill to to Ashton Fields beyond Walkden. The, the grade varied, but it was nearly all uphill to one degree or other. In fact, I looked at the contours on the map the other day from Booth's Bank Curve, where it started to go uphill to Ashton Fields, the average gradient was 1 in 55. And they're a lot steeper than that in places and a little bit easier than that in places as well but you know that's a long slog for two and a half miles with you know many many tons of coal behind these little engines really, they're only small engines after all. And it was busy? Yeah, you could get up to a hundred or more wagons a day on a Saturday going up loaded, going up there, and all the activity from the pit here, actually, going back to the uh, BR sidings at Ashley Green. That's a completely separate arrangement. So yeah, there was lots of activity, weighing uh, other things, shunting within the yard here, uh, various shunts, getting rid of the slurry of the dirt, bringing empties back, lots of activity. The secret was to try and guess what was going on next, which is not always easy. You know, um, the easiest thing to predict were the train, the main trains going from the pit up to Ashton Field, really. And it's and it's hard to believe mm. that this whole area yeah. was a huge, great colliery. That's right. When yeah. you and I used to come down here as kids. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And now it's it's all bushes. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Disappeared practically from view. Actually, yeah. You've got to look for traces, haven't you, really? Incredible. It's nice in a way to have it countryfied, but uh, you know, what a transformation. It's uh, staggering, it really is. How a whole industry as large as coal yeah. has totally disappeared. Yeah, not just here, but in many, many, many of the locations as well, you know, where the equally big installations have just disappeared, as you say, yeah.
Steve described in a magazine article, watching these heavy trains get over the canal bridge. You, you made a really good reference to like t two um, excited dogs barking oh, at yeah. each other with yeah, the well, wheels slipping and that. It's, it's two different chimney arrangements, the standard uh, chimney and the geezer ejector, um, and the two engines were double-headed. It was double-banked, trying to shove a load of dirt over the canal and the two of them were in and out of sequence and that sort of thing and slipping and stuff so it sounded like an aggressive fight between two dogs to me because the, the two exhausts were quite different from each other you know you got the whole some deep blast of Harry and the, the more treble orientated exhaust of the other engine which I can't remember right now whether it was a respite or not anyway one of the diesel fitted ones uh, so yeah that was exciting that was exciting that Luckily, the main headgear at Astley Green has been preserved as a monument to the coal industry in Lancashire, and it's well worth a visit. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe.